Okay, let me see if I can give a backstory to bring you up to speed. The island of Tinian is where the U.S. bomber, B-29 bomber, the Enola Gate, took off to bomb Hiroshima. And also where Boxcar took off to bomb Nagasaki a few days later. Uh, before it was in American hands, it was uh, part of the Japanese Empire. And uh, before the U.S. took control, there was a lot of um, bombing There was uh, that preceded the Battle of Saipan. So a lot of structures, Japanese built structures were destroyed. And a lot of them were damaged and then repurposed by the U.S. as they... Uh, created the North Field um, before they built the runways. So anyway, there are some, still some buildings that are still standing today. One of them is the Air Administration Building that you're looking at now. And you'll see the damage to a lot of the columns and the structure and the floor. But if you look at the foundation, if you look at the floor of the building, uh, you'll see that it's not sitting directly on a slab that's directly on the uh, ground. There's arches. There are arches along the side that result in passageways, channels, open channels from one side of the building to the other. And whenever I do my tours, you know, that, uh, that question came up once and then it's always uh, uh, haunted the tours every time I take a, a customer to Tinian. So... Over the years, I've had a chance to bring nuclear physicists who've explained the fission and fusion processes of the atomic bombs. I've had um, individuals whose relatives, fathers, or uncles were part of the bomb wings, the 505 bomb wing. And I've had individuals who've, who've had relatives who were actually on the island during the invasion or as part of the um, uh, development of the island after the invasion, you know, for the creation of the runways. So anyway, this time I had a uh, fellow who is a construction supervisor. And the question that comes up is, why are those arches there? What purpose are they serving? We know it's not decorative. This is a wartime construction. Is it for drainage? Is it for airflow? Uh, that question has come up, and every time I get an opportunity to go to Tinian, and especially if there's an individual who might be familiar with it simply from a war um, buff standpoint, or in this case, fortunately, we have a construction supervisor. So here's his answer as to why those arches are there, why those channels are there. And then if you, as a viewer, have a what you believe is the correct answer, or even just speculation. I'd love to hear it. Let me know what you think. After you listen to his explanation, it sounds pretty plausible, but the question still remains until we get some verification uh, from someone who actually really knows for sure and, and can provide some proof as to what are the arches for. So take a listen. Those foundation supports, then the slab, the ground force slab, looks like it's supported off of... Those arches? Right, it's supported off the arches. Right. So the I, ground I know floor the arches... slab is not bearing directly on the ground, the ground surface. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, so it's was just... it unstable soils? Because you know, it's called hot, a PI, plasticity index. So mm -hmm. if you have clay soils, they tend to shrink swell, swell mm -hmm. shrink mm -hmm. based mm -hmm. on the rainy, dry season, rainy season. So they too much movement. So that's the only reason I can come up with. Okay. All right, so it's to, to put it simply, it's to prevent the slab from being directly in direct contact with an, un right, with a, with an unstable soil or right. with a fluctuating, uh, fluctuating uh, soil. soil. Okay, that seems to make sense. But then the second way to look at this, what utility with these pockets, these, that's a lot of work to go into to create something. I see no, it's not storage bins. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not drainage. It's not drainage. It's not ventilation. That side is a little higher, but it doesn't. When you, you, go you, shape the, mm -hmm. you shape the ground, you put, you know, you divert the water, storm water around the building right, right. for $2 instead of spending, you know, $2 million to create this and right, incorporate right. that into your... So the slab on grade design. idea, that, that sounds like what I'll go because with. Because if you have unstable <laughs> right, right. soils that move, because you do have rainy seasons yes, out here in yes, dry, yes, so mm -hmm. if this soil has a high PI, plasticity index, mm -hmm. then it's, it's called shrink swell mm -hmm. soil. And if it moves, you know, it only has to raise up a quarter inch, which is... Now it can raise up multiple inches, and that's mm -hmm. just going to 
you know, wreck your floor, crack your slab, concrete slab. Cool. So there you have it. Thanks to Ted for that input. Now I know what some of you might be thinking. Yes, I was a civil engineer in previous chapters of my life, but as a, a design engineer for the Port Authority working on the Kennedy 2000 project at the time, uh, I wasn't designing wartime structures in the Pacific Ocean under uh, Imperial Japanese um, command. Uh, we were designing roads based on traffic flow in New York City. But I suppose if I called out all the stops and called in all the troops and did the research, we could locate some more uh, evidence-based um, uh, information that uh, could result in a final uh, decision. But anyway, if you, what's your opinion? If you have some uh, factual or even speculative uh, ideas and opinions, please put them in the comments below. Let me know and I'll see you next time.